Hello, we're glad to see you again. I'm Neil Wake Him Up Folger. And I'm his partner in crime, Lamont, AKA Lean With It, Hammond. Lean With It. We've got tons of Blazer action news in this edition. So grab a Coke, get a snack, and take a seat because the BSR is on right now. This weekend was action-packed as both basketball teams, the softball team, and the baseball team were all at home here in the Azalea City. However, it was the VSU men's basketball team that had the biggest win of the weekend, pulling off a much-needed W over our hated and bitter rivals from Carrollton. We see here the complex crazies in full force at the game, supporting the Blazers against West Georgia. As we see here, Mike Crane passing there to John Rogers. Back to Mike Crane, back to JT Thomas. In the middle of John Rogers for the easy basket as VSU is out front early. Here comes JT Thomas, passing the ball out to Ray Kennedy. Then back to Daniel Ferguson for the three-point as VSU is off and rolling. Here's Mike Crane. Passing to JT Thomas, who take, look, takes his time, takes his time, dribbles, dribbles, as they eventually finds Mike Crane again, who pulls it up, misses it, but there for the rebound is JT Thomas. What a game he had. Back on the offensive side, the Blazers, Daniel Ferguson. JT Thomas, he will drain a three. Oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. That's what he does, folks, is there is John Rogers doing what he does best, blocking shots, and I don't think, I don't think it, it, would, it would even matter. As the Blazers were in com complete control of this game, there we see Daniel Ferguson. He had a great game as well, scoring a career high points. As there is a dance team just living it up as they are there at halftime to do a dance every week, every home game, and it is superb. Back to the action here at the complex. As we see here, Will Thompson faking the shot, passing to Daniel Ferguson. He fakes his shot too and takes it all the way in for the nice reverse layup. Like I said before, Valdosta State was clicking on all sides of the ball. John Rogers, the big man in the middle, no one could stop him for West Georgia as that was a three-point play. Great penetration there by JT Thomas as he kicks it back out to Daniel Ferguson for the three. The Blazers are still in control of the ball all game long. Mike Crane, nice pick there by JT Thomas, setting Mike Crane free at the top of the key. Mike Crane would use that to his advantage and get the ball back to his pick mate, JT Thomas, who would miss it, but there for the rebound. I mean, who else, guys? Who else? John Rogers, he would miss it again. But there was JT Thomas with a offensive rebound and a put back. Mike Crane, what a week he's had. Almost drains the three, misses it, but then again, West Georgia would stumble. I mean, what else is new? We all hate West Georgia. As they would find Herman Birds for the three-point shot as there as the clock winds down. 103-72, here is Mike Crane. Very good game against West Georgia. What do you think led to the team's success? Uh, we just had to come out ready for this game to good preparation. Everybody had to come locked in to bring the A game. Just had to come out ready and focus. Okay. And uh, how does it feel to be player of the week? Scoring 23 it, points today. It feels good. That was my first honor ever being here. So, you know, just trying to get my respect around the league, and it just worked out for me. All right. Thank you very much. Right. The 103-72 to 72 win was the largest victory over the Braves since 1972. Wow. Mike Crane led the team with 23 points, and junior guard Herman Burge had the game of his life, netting a career-high 22 points, including going 6 of 7 from behind the arch. Center John Rogers pulled down his 13th double-double of the season with 18 points and 11 rebounds. Major contributions from Daniel Ferguson and JT Thomas helped in the crucial Gulf South Conference win. With the victory, VSU ties it up with West Georgia in the GSC East for third place behind number six Montevallo and 14th ranked Alabama Huntsville who are running away with the top two spots in the division. For his performance last week, Mike Crane was named Gulf South Conference East Player of the Week as he scored a phenomenal 59 points and helped out with seven assists. He has definitely raised his play to the next level. The Blazers will be on the road this weekend when they travel to face West Alabama on Saturday night, 8.30 p.m. 
The Blazers will return home for senior night, the final game of the year, at home, when they host Gulf South Conference East leading and number six, Montevallo. The Blazers will then take a trip to Pensacola on February 25th for their regular season finale against the Argonauts of West Florida. In Saturday's first game at the complex, the Lady Blazers were in a struggle all the way through, but couldn't muster up enough energy to conquer the Lady Braves. Let's take a look at the game. And here we have the Lady Blazers setting up around the three-point line. Candace Farrell passes to Carly Peterson for the three, and it's good. Rosa Bruce saves the ball. And there we have Tracy Newton passes in to Nicole Jernigan for the bucket. Tracy Newton on the three. Passes over to Candace Farrell. Passes inside to number 33 and back out to Janelle Colazzo. Who gets the roll for two? And the Blazers on the three-point line. She's looking, but she can't find anybody. Passes to number 15, Candace Farrell, who takes it all the way to the hoop and gets the two. Lady Blazers pass inside, Candace Farrell, back to number four, back to number 10, Carly Peterson for another three. And there we have the VSU band playing, trying to rev up the crowd. There we have Janelle Colazzo, passes over and it's two. She gets the roll, ladies and gentlemen. Nina Risto. Janelle Colazzo with the ball, she fakes, dribbles. She's looking to pass it inside, but passes to number 15, Candace Farrell, who passes inside. It's back into Candace Farrell for two. And there we have Coach Kylie Hill with the Lady Blazers at a timeout. There are VSU cheerleaders in full effect. Wow, how many of you can do that at home? There we go. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Good job, cheerleaders. Here we have Janelle Colazzo passes in to Rose Abreu for two. Nice play. Lady Blazers, oh, look at that defense. Number 15, Candace Farrell takes it to the hoop. The 58 to 53 loss sealed the season sweep for West Georgia. Candace Farrell led VSU in scoring with 17 points. Ty Ellis led West Georgia in scoring with 22 points. Tracy Newton scored 12 points but wasn't really herself as she turned the ball over four times. However, let's remember last week when Newton was named Gulf South Conference Player of the Week after combining for 44, that's right, 44, and 12 boards on the road against Alabama Huntsville and North Alabama. Valdosta State remains third in the East behind West Georgia and West Florida, both of whom are nine and one in the conference. The Lady Blazers will go on the road this weekend to face off with West Alabama Huntsville before returning home on the 20th to face off with Montevallo. The, Blady, the Lady Blazers will then travel to face off with division conference leaders West Florida on the 25th. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at Valdosta State's baseball game against Florida Gulf Coast. We'll also look at the VSU Hall of Fame inductions that went down this past weekend. Oh, yeah. Don't change that dial. Don't. Hi, this is Skylar Thorns with your Blazer Sports Report. I'm Joan Chen with a message for people of all nationalities who come to America for what it has to offer, including protection from discrimination when you want to rent or buy a home. It is against the law for anyone to deny you housing because of your national origin, the color of your skin, or the size of your family. Know your rights and use them. If you've been treated unfairly when it comes to housing, contact HUD for help. HUD is on your side. I'm a sophomore in college this year. Man, if you had known me when I was a sophomore in high school, nobody could tell me anything. I gave all my teachers a bad time. They all gave up on me, except my English teacher. Eight years teaching high school English, 10 years in recovery for alcohol addiction. To be or not to be. I got help. That's it right there. When you get help, who knows just who you'll help along the way. For drug and alcohol information and treatment referral for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Hey, turn the TV on. 
Even if it runs on electricity, it runs on fuel. Because most electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. Well, honey, don't flood it. I'm not flooding it. Fortunately, appliances with the Energy Star label are more efficient, which means lower utility bills while cutting down on global warming and air pollution. So look for products with the Energy Star label. Energy isn't all you're saving. I think it might need a tuna. I'm Herman Burge, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. <laughs> Welcome back to your BSR. There was a lot of action on the diamond this week and as both the baseball and softball teams played their home openers. After defeating Eckerd 2-1 in a fantastic finish in the first game of the Ralph Starling Classic, the Blazers went up against Florida Gulf Coast on Saturday. And here are the highlights as the Star Spangled Banner waves and waves at Billy Grant Field on North Campus. It was a slight rain delay, but it really didn't matter as the Blazers came out in full force here you see a foul ball, and our catcher of the Blazers getting ready to take the blunt of the nine-inning contest that was delayed about an hour because of thunderstorms in the area. The Blazers getting ready as the pregame highlights start up. As the Blazers, they chop a chop at a third, and on the wait, wait a second, wait a second, on a wild throw! Because there you saw Coach Shannon Jernigan waving around Brian Hicks at third base. And it turned out that they would eventually get that runner in. As here we see Matt Merchant out the stretch, gets the sign, and delivers the pitch. And I guess it just faded away into nowhere. But there we see the wild pitch as Brian Hicks comes home to score the game's first run for the Blazers as they take a the lead. As here we see, oh, what a beautiful move right there. Look at the movement on that curveball from Matt Merchant. As we see here, another, no, not a strikeout, but it's a flyout. It's hit deep, deep. Deep, but Brian Hicks says, you know what, you're in my territory now, I'm gonna catch that can of corn. Here is see another Florida Gulf Coast batter, and he swings away and hits a deep, no, not a deep, a shallow ball that will eventually be caught by the third baseman for the Blazers at, at Scott Booker. Brooker, excuse me. Here we see again another play by Scott Brooker. No, excuse me, it's by the shortstop Alberto Castellon as they complete, no, they can't complete the double play as Judd Nelson bobbles it at the last second, but it wouldn't matter as the Blazers were consistent both offensively and defensively as there we see Florida Gulf Coast. Man, did they have some bad throws in this game. Very awful throws by Florida Gulf Coast, which is good for the Blazers as there we see a little chopper to the second baseman. He would throw it up and throw it to the first baseman in time to keep the runner at second base. As there we see Judd Nelson with a rocket that was scorched in the left field as the Blazers would send one runner home on the play and another one would advance to third as Judd Seymour is by far one of the leaders of this ball club. As there we see, a strike three that was thrown. And that's Judd Seymour again. Wow, he just hit and then he was up there again. What magic of television. As there we see about Austin State, they will fly out to the right fielder, but there, they're trying to go home. They're trying to go home and he is safe at the plate. Great call there by the umpire, the man in blue. We love him very much. Oh, what a snare! Remarkable game by the Blazers, Blazers as they would go on to the 7-3 victory as that was the biggest margin of victory on the season so far. As Matt Merchant got the win going five innings, allowing only three hits, two runs, and came five Florida Gulf Coast batters. Phillips went three for four from the plate and drove in two runs as Cole Paul continued his very hot streak as he went two for four and drove in a ribby of his own. The Blazers are now two and two overall after losing to Georgia College and State on Sunday as there you see, Gulf South Conference play will not start up until March. Next up for our Blazers will be a home game against Thomas on Wednesday at Billy Grant Field at 4 p.m. the Nighthawks with Thomas University. Then they will go on the road this weekend against Augusta State in Augusta, Georgia. That's a doubleheader on Saturday. And then they will have another game against Augusta State this Sunday. They will return home to face Georgia Southwestern and Florida Southern on February 21st and 24th. Hit them hard, it's all you. They're back and they were hitting them hard as VSU's softball team was also in action this weekend as they played a doubleheader against Florida Tech. In game one, the Blazers fell eight to six after allowing six runs in the third. Megan Hubb had a two-run double for Florida Tech. Laura Chris Chisson hit a home run. Amy Geis knocked in a two-run homer for the Lady Blazers. In game two, the Lady Blazers got their revenge as they posted a six to one victory over Florida Tech. Kristen Fetz went one for three with an RBI for Florida Tech. 
Robin Williams went one for three with a two-run homer, and Trell Edwards went one for three with a three-run homer. The Lady Blazers are now two and two on the season. Next up will be a home doubleheader against Florida Southern on Thursday. This weekend, the Lady Blazers will host GSC foes West Florida on Saturday. Then they will hit the road at Albany State on the 19th for a doubleheader and on February 25th, they will play St. Leo for a doubleheader at St. Leo, Florida, 4 p.m. Next week, the Valdosta State golf team travels to Clinton, South Carolina for the Presbyterian College Intercollegiate Golf Tournament. Also, Blazer Tennis is home for the next couple of matches as they take on Georgia Southwestern and North Florida this weekend. And then next week, Armstrong Atlantic State and Tuskegee come a calling to the Azalea City. On Saturday, the Valdosta State Athletic Hall of Fame to welcome four new members into its prestigious organization. Here the report is BSR's Jamal Ferguson. The bad weather did not keep BSU from holding its annual Hall of Fame introduction ceremony on Saturday, February the 11th in the newly remodeled University Center. Family and friends gathered in the lobby and the Magnolia Room to honor the inductees into the VSU Hall of Fame. Herb Reinhardt, the athletic director at VSU, was the master of ceremonies for today's luncheon. He began by honoring past introductees like Sam Bowden, class of 97, Bobby Rich, class of 98, Chris Hatcher, class of 2001, and Ray McCullough, class of 2002. After honoring these past introductees, he introduced the formal speaker of the afternoon, Dr. Ronald M. Zachariah, who touched on how honored we are for our 2006 introductees, which consist of three former players and the first active introductee. After President Zachariah concluded his speech, it was time to introduce the introductees of the 2006 class into the Hall of Fame. First was Don Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, then Klaus Acker. Ten record in singles, including a 20 and 6 mark his senior season when he was named Gulf South Conference Player of the Year. Both teams. Next was Tommy Thomas and Kelvin Durkin. Tommy Thomas is the first active introductee to go into the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame will add an inductee who is still on the job at Valdosta State. Tommy joined the athletic family in the fall of 1967 and became head baseball coach in 1968. We and finally, accepting the award for Kevin Durkin is Nikki Belenis, his VSU coach. And this is Jamal Ferguson reporting for the Blazer Sports Report. Thanks for that report, Jamal. Here are the detailed stats on the class of 2006. Klaus Ocker was a star for VSU tennis during his Letterman run in 1997 and 1998. He was number one in both singles and doubles, compiling records of 35 and 9 in doubles and 33 and 10 on the court alone. He was a Gulf South Conference Player of the Year in 1998, going 20 and 6 that year. He led the Blazers to playoff participation both years and was selected to all conference and all American teams. Thanks, Neil. Kevin Durkin led the Blazer golf team to the national tournament in 1998 and 1999. With his 11 top 10 finishes, he led VSU to the conference title in 1999. He was a two-time all-conference selection and is currently a professional on the nationwide tour. Congratulations. He will tee off in a tournament in Australia this weekend. You're welcome. Tommy Thomas needs no explanation to current BSU students, faculty, and staff. The first inductee still working at the university, Coach Thomas has been a mainstay here at Valdosta State since 1967. He was promoted to head baseball coach in 1968, and the rest is history, guys. 13 conference crowns, eight regional titles, and the legendary 1979 national championship. 
not to mention the winningest D2 baseball coach in history. He has served on numerous baseball committees and was enshrined into the American Baseball Coaches Association Hall of Fame last month. That is a mouthful. Dawn Wynn was the standout leader for the Lady Blazer basketball team during her run from 1991 to 1995. She stands 13th all-time in scoring with 1,181 points. A two-time all-conference and all-American forward, she aided the Lady Blazers to a 25-4 record in her senior campaign, which resulted in the GSC East Division Championship and a spot in the regional final of the national tournament. Well, folks, we're about to take a brief break here on BSR, but stay tuned. Coming up, we'll look at the Blazer football action going on this season and the VSU cheerleading clinic. Stay tuned. I'm Coach Chris Hatcher of Valdosta State Blazers, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! My name is PFC Eunice Guerra. What I like about the National Guard is I can be, you know, gung-ho and go out there and do, you know, really awesome things, stuff that, you know, civilians, you know, wouldn't understand. And then I get to go home and, you know, put on a pair of jeans. And I wanted to be a civilian and then turn around and be a soldier. Defend freedom. In the Army National Guard, you can. Visit 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM today. I was in an accident and had to go in an ambulance. It hurt a lot, and I was real scared. Daddy looks scared, too. I think where are they taking it? Every two seconds, someone needs blood. Accident victims, cancer patients, children. Please call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE because someone needs you right now. The girl. Was it you who saved my life? For me, it's giving the best of myself. For me, it's the professional team environment and the mutual respect that I share with my colleagues. For me, it's providing my patients with the best and safest care possible. For me, it's having the latest in healthcare technologies and the privilege of providing the best healthcare to America's veterans. We are the nurses of VA. VACareers.com, a career in caring. Hi, and welcome back to the Blazers Sports Report. As we all know, football in Valdosta is hard to keep on the down low, even in the offseason. Signing day for the 2006 football season was last week, and head coach Chris Hatcher is extremely pleased with the results. BSR's own Tommy Parker has the details. BSR decided to see what Coach Hatcher and the Blazers football team had in store for their off-season conditioning toward another run at the Division II National Championship title. It's very difficult to tell. We're in the middle of our off-season conditioning program, and, um, and then we'll take the next phase, which will be spring practice, and then we'll sit down as a staff and evaluate where we're at, and um, hopefully we'll have some, some good surprises and some of the guys we've been counting on, hopefully they'll step up in some of the departures that we had from last season. The Blazers had nine total mid-year signees to join the program. We wanted to find out how the new addition of players will fit into Coach Hatcher's system for the upcoming season. Well, there's three in particular. Our offensive line, um, we lost two great tackles in um, Richard Collier and William Shelton. And then Paul Streaker's been injured, so it'd be interesting whether he can come back next season or not. Defensive line, we lost four starters up there, and then we lost... Um, five out of our, our top seven guys in the defensive backfield. So we got a lot of holes to fill. Um, however, we feel really good about our linebacking core, and um, we got some good young wide receivers that we feel like can make an impact on the upcoming year. We also wanted to find out what were some of the Blazers' offseason preparations for next season. First of all, we're, we've been lifting weights ever since the first day of school, and, and now we're into our early morning conditioning stage. Um, basically, it's more mental discipline than anything, and we put them through some tough rigors. Um, we'll also have some competitions within the team that we call the Blazer Games. Um, so hopefully all that competition and then going through spring ball, we can kind of get our squad where it needs to be um, 
till the new incoming class comes in in August. I also had a chance to stop and talk to one of the top media signees that would be expected to fill Vincent Brown's shoes at running back position for next season. Uh, it's, uh, it's the same school, and uh, I'm making a lot of friends, so things are going a lot smoother now than they were earlier. Uh, I don't know about the depth chart or anything. I just, I just want to come here and just play football. I mean, there's a couple of things that's different, of course, but everything else is pretty much the same. This has been Tommy Parker with your Blazer Sports Report. Back to the studio. Thanks, Tommy. As we move from football to the girls on the field cheering for the football team as Blazer Cheerleading hosted its annual cheerleading clinic for kids around the community, community to come out and show their skills on the court. And I must say, our future VSU cheerleader, cheerleaders looks like they have what it takes. Here with more is our own Tiffany Simmons. spreading their cheer this weekend at their clinic, which is held twice a year, every year. VSU's assistant cheerleading coach, Holly Chrysler, tells us more. The clinic, and we have it twice a year, every year. We've been doing it for about eight years now. And what it is, is children from ages three to 13 come and they get to learn motions and jumps and stunts and just basically, you know, cheerleading skills and they get to interact with all the cheerleaders and kind of learn some of the cheers that we do so when they come to the games they can cheer along with us. The kids learn new dances as well as new cheers in order to gear up for the basketball game against West Georgia later that night. When asked why she decided to help out with the clinic, VSU's cheerleader Meredith Moore tells us this. It's a really good um, way to get us involved in the community and a lot of the girls love coming and um, they really look, for some reason, they look up to us and see us as role models and I think it's good we, take, we make a positive influence on the community and plus they, they love coming and have fun so I like, I like being a part of it. It's a lot of fun for me too. <laughs> and finally, during halftime, the cheerleaders got to showcase their talents. the kids had a wonderful time today at the clinic as well as tonight while performing in front of the large crowd. Hopefully there were some future cheerleaders who were inspired to one day come back to this arena and perform as an official VSU cheerleader. I'm Tiffany Simmons, back to you all in the studio. And now we go from future students to current students as we enter into the intramural update corner. Outstanding! as basketball is in full force with games throughout the week, Monday through Thursday, starting at 7 p.m. in the SRC. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready to get wet because Enter 2 Water Polo is in full effect, Tuesdays at 8 and 9 at your campus recreational center. Racquetball is in full swing, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8 to 10, no pun intended. Freedom Park, get ready. Softball deadline is March 7th with captain's meeting on March 9th. Breaststroke, butterfly, freestyle, or backstroke, it does not matter because I'm telling you why. Swimming entries are due March 28th with the captain's meeting on March 30th. Tennis entries are due February 21st. Four on four flag football will start up March 21st with a captain's meeting on March 23rd. And please, make sure you don't flag guard. That's not all that's four on four as dodgeball will start up March 21st. Captain's meeting, March 23rd. The best front lawn sport ever invented is ultimate frisbee and that starts up this week with the captain's meeting on Thursday. English football, otherwise known as soccer to us Americans, yes. kicks off this weekend with all captains meetings Thursday. For more information, contact your campus recreational center at 333-5898. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. What a show, what a show. What a show. To the entire BSR cast, 
I've been Lamont Tammy. And this is Neil Wake Him Up Folger. And remember our catchphrase, Lamont, if it's 100% Blazer Sports, what do we do? <sighs> we really don't care. We don't care. So we'll see you next time. Next time? Next week. Take it easy. Yup, it's us again. Welcome to your Blazer Sports Report. I am Neil Folger with a new haircut, and this is my co-host. Lamont, let's get it Hammond with the same hairstyle and profile as last week. Hairstyle and profile. And coming up on this week's show, hopefully it's going to be our best ever. Isn't that right, Lamont? I agree. I so, so, hey, keep it here. Your Blazer Sports Report starts now. Before we ended up with a surprise home contest versus Augusta State this past weekend, the Blazers played Thomas University at Billy Grant Field. Here with the report is Chris Walsh. Take it away, Chris. Before heading up to Augusta State for a three-game weekend, the Blazers played host to the Thomas University Nighthawks on Wednesday. The Blazers were on a tear going into the game, winning three of their last four. Brad Alton started the game for BSU and had some trouble finding the plate early. It wouldn't last long, however, after giving up one run and one hit in the first, Alton went to the sixth inning, giving up only one more hit. Matt Merchant, Brandon Cooper, John Sermon, and Landon Gray each came in and pitched one shutout inning to help BSU hold on for the win. Alton was awarded the win for the Blazers. I cannot say enough about the pitching staff. We've now gone about 15 pitchers uh, in just six games, and we've got 17, and they've just been fantastic. I mean, our earned run average is under two. You can't ask for anything better than that. The Blazers often stepped up in front of the almost 300 fans in the crowd as well. The issue's 12 hits were their most in a game so far this season. DH Justin Hill had the performance of the night going three for three with one walk, two doubles, two RBIs, and a run. Hill's RBI double to left field in the fifth helped seal the win for VSU. I'm just seeing the ball real well, you know, getting fastball to hit, and uh, when I get it. <laughs> That's dirty, man. <laughs> you got to put that on. We're going to have to. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> just go ahead and answer the question. Right, is the right. ball slowing down for you or is it getting bigger for you? It's just uh, you got to make sure you get that pitch, that one pitch, and when you get it, don't miss it. Are you see more the rest of the season from it? I hope so. <laughs> Second baseman Alberto Castellan also had a good night offensively, going two for four from the plate with one RBI, two runs, and three steals. And with all of that offensive power and shutdown pitching, the Blazers were able to hold on for the 6-1 to one victory. At the beginning of the season, Coach Thomas told the Valdosadeli Times his returning next year will depend on this junior class. So after improving to four and two and having so many things working, Coach Thomas seems to feel good about a return. Uh, we're going to end up playing over 50 ball games in the regular season if we can avoid the rain. And uh, if we can win about 35 ball games and get ourselves into the conference tournament and then see what happens from there, It'll be no doubt I will return with these youngsters and spend my senior year with them. This is Chris Walsh at Billy Grant Field after another impressive Blazer victory. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Chris. On Saturday, the Blazers lost game one of the doubleheader to Augusta State, 6-2. Chris Harris was the lone bright star spot for VSU as he hit in both Blazer runs. Dustin Taylor drove in two runs for Augusta State. 
The Blazers came back and won game two, one to zero. Justin Hill went four for four with an RBI and Matt Marquant pitched a complete game one hitter. On Sunday, the Blazers won seven to two. Captain Brian Hicks went three for five and four Blazers had a ribby apiece. The Blazers are now six and three on the season and are on a two game winning streak. Next up for the Blazers will be a homestand against Georgia Southwestern before hosting the defending national champion, Florida Southern, this weekend. Also, February 28th, they will face Thomas University at Thomasville, Georgia, 4 p.m., and March 2nd, they will face Albany State at Albany, Georgia, 4 p.m. Well, the Austin State softball team also played at home this past weekend as they began their conference play rather early in the year with a doubleheader against the Lady Argonauts of West Florida. The Lady Blazers found the early going hard against West Florida as they quickly found themselves in a 5-0 hole in the first inning. However, our softball ladies did not quit and scored seven runs in the final two innings to take a win away from West Florida 11-9. Trail Edwards was a hero of the game, coming up to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning with a game tied 9-9, and with one swing of her bat, promptly blasted a game-winning two-run home run over the right field fence. Second basewoman Caroline Cripe also hit one out of the park, a three-run dinger in the sixth inning. Mass Media's own Holly Willis went one for four with a two-run double, and Becca Asman had a ribby as well. West Florida's Tabitha Harrelson hit 500 for the game with a home run and four ribbies. And Lindsey Warrenfeltz also went deep for the Lady Argos, but it was not enough in game one. The second game was all blue and green as Valdosta State could not get anything going and was shut out eight to nothing. Emily Burge went the distance for West Florida, scattering seven hits in seven innings and came four Lady Blazers. Christina Johnson, Maura Gusson, Tabitha Harrelson and Burge herself all hit balls more than 200 feet, which equals a home run. The only bright spots for VSU in game two were Holly Willis and Peaches Ramsey, each with two hits. After these two games, the Lady Blazers appear very confident entering into conference play later on this month. The Lady Blazers went to Albany State on Sunday and swept the Lady Rams as well. In game one, VSU won four to three as our own Holly Willis had a solo home run and Robin Williams went three for three with an RBI. In the second game, the Lady Blazers blasted Albany State nine to nothing. Amy Geis had a two run homer and Robin Williams hit in three ribbies. Brianna Colas pitched five shutdown innings for Valdosta State. We are now five and five and one and one in conference play. As we see there, we're up on West Florida because V is ahead of W in the alphabet. Next on the schedule for Valdosta State are matches at St. Leo on Saturday and then away at Conference Foe West Alabama the weekend of March 4th. Coming up after this break, we'll take a look at this past weekend's tennis action. We'll also take a look at one of this year's academic all-conference standouts here on your Blazer Sports Report. Stay tuned, it's a good one. We'll be back. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! Blazers! One breakthrough machine gave us insight into the bones, as another did for the heart, and another for the brain. Now doctors are using a new machine to practice medicine and save lives. The difference is, it's one you can use too. When you log on to MedlinePlus.gov from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, you're tapping into the largest, most comprehensive medical website in the world. MedlinePlus.gov, the website doctors prescribe. For some folks, saving for the future is easy, but for you, it might take a little more effort. Saving for your future is your responsibility, and there's a lot to save for. I never thought of that. Like your child's education, Perhaps uncovered medical expenses. Or just to be sure you can live the way you want when you retire. The time is now to save for tomorrow. Save now or work forever. The choice is yours. Choose to save. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. 
is that this heart of mine embraces all day through I'll find you in the morning sun and when the night is new I'll be looking at the moon but I'll be seeing you I'm John Hansen I'm the men and women's tennis coach at Valdosta State you are watching the Blazer Sports Report Welcome back to your VSR. As the VSU tennis squads opened their spring season this past weekend when they hosted foe Georgia Southwestern at the tennis complex on Saturday. Here with the report is VSR's Laurie Dickey. Beautiful day Saturday as the men's and women's Blazer tennis teams took on the Georgia Southwestern Hurricanes. The doubles matches were played first and helped get the Blazers out to a great start with an early lead. The number one doubles team of Anna Cabiro and Ann Corten proved to be an unstoppable pair, keeping Georgia Southwestern from winning a game. Karina Schulten and Anna Cabiro went on to win their singles matches without giving up a game to the Hurricanes. Anna Cabiro is the only senior on the women's team, and we asked her about her leadership role for the women. No, I don't think so. I don't think there is one person that is necessarily the leader our team. The Lady Blazers won all of their matches and beat Georgia Southwestern with a score of 9-0. to zero. The story is quite similar on the men's side. The number two doubles team of Nicholas Overkemping and Leos Jelinek, as well as the number three doubles team of Mikhail Andreo and Thomas Provost, set the tone for the Blazers as they had perfect scores in their doubles matches. Four out of the six singles teams on the men's side one in straight sets without giving up a game to the Hurricanes. That brought the final score to 9-0 with a win for the Blazers. We talked to number three singles player Thomas Provost and he told us about the team's improvement thus far. I think they have practiced a lot, so I don't know exactly now because it's our first match, so we'll see in a couple of matches and we'll see. I don't know yet. I guess we improve, everybody improve a lot, but we can't be sure. We'll see for the next of the season. Coach Hansen also talked to us, and he told us about his expectations for the season. Well, the, the guys we know are very strong. The, the women's team uh, is going to be a question mark because we have a lot of freshmen, but I think we're going to be all right this year. Who are you looking at? On, on the men, we have uh, Christoph Schneider, returning All-American, and uh, uh, Mickey Andreo uh, are, t are two of our leaders from last year, and we're lucky to have them back this year. For the women, we've got the uh, All-American doubles team of uh, Ayanna Corton and Anna Cabiro, and they are actually the uh, just the backbone of our team right now, and, and, and they've been great for the younger girls. Both the men's and women's team will play at the Complex Friday the 24th against Armstrong Atlantic. Matches will start at 2 p.m. It looks like it will be an exciting 2006 season for the men's and women's Blazer tennis teams as they look to win a national championship title. This has been Laurie Dickey with your Blazer Sports Report. Back to you in the studio. The men's team went 2-0 this past weekend after defeating North Florida. Notable Blazer players on Sunday were Mikhail Andro and Hillenick and over Kemping as they both won in singles as the duo tam, tam, the duos of over Kemping and Yelnik and Andreo Provost won in doubles. Also, the Lady Blazers fell unfortunately to North Florida 4-3 as Anna Corson, and Anna Cabiro, and Schulten won in their singles matches. And Christy McKinnon and Schulten also won in doubles. So it looks like it's going to be a very interesting year as the men's and women's teams kick up their season. Up next for our Blazer tennis teams include home matchups against powerful foe Armstrong Atlantic State on Friday afternoon, Tuskegee on Saturday morning, and then a huge game, I can't stress that enough, huge game against bitter conference rival West Florida Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at the tennis complex. The golf team also opened their season this past week in the Matlock Collegiate Classic. The team finished 13th out of a 15-team field. Blake DeCesare was 8 over par and finished 9th. Nate Balanis tied for 23rd. 
Um, March 6th through the 7th, VSU will be playing in the 56th Southern Cal Intercollegiate Conference at San Juan, California. The Blazer basketball teams were on the road this past weekend to face off with conference foe West Alabama. Coach Mike Helfer's Blazers were not able to hold off a late run by West Alabama and fell 68 to 59. Mike Crane led the Blazers with 20 points and John Rogers recorded yet another double-double with 12 points and 13 rebounds. Kareem Ward had led the way for the Tigers as he netted 15 points. With the hard defeat, the Blazers now are now even in Gulf South Conference play at 6-6 six six with an overall record of 15-9. The game against Montevallo is crucial as the Blazers look to solidify a sponsor in the conference tourney. Coach Mike Helfer's Blazers are on the road in Pensacola against West Florida on Saturday afternoon at 5.30 to wrap up the regular season. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heartbroken as the Lady Blazers lost in a heartbreaker against Livingston as West Alabama scored a layup with one second left to beat VSU 70 to 69. If that isn't close, I don't know what it is. I don't know either. Tracy Newton scored a team high of 28 points and led the team with nine rebounds. Candace Farrell had 17 points in the losing effort. West Alabama's Veronica Lee had 17 points for the Lady Tigers. Even with the loss, Valdosta State has secured themselves a position in the Gulf South Conference Tournament with a GSC record of seven and five and 16 and eight overall. They travel to GSC East Champion West Florida for a game Saturday evening. Lamont, well, that men's Blazers game against West Alabama really didn't turn out so good because the Blazers, they fell short to a 17-7 run by the Tigers. Wow, the game. That's, so, that's horrible. But there's always time for improvement. Always time for improvement. Coming up next on your Blazers Sports Report, we will fill you in on one of our all-academic athletes. And we'll reveal to you what involves four walls and a little blue ball. A psych no, ward? it's not the psych ward. Dang it. Stay tuned on BSR. These hands have done so much in life. They can do so much for life by practicing fire safety. Make your home safe from fire. Learn how to use your fire extinguisher. Plan and practice escape routes. And install and maintain smoke alarms on every level in your home. So you'll be able to give others a hand. Prevent fire, save lives. Go to our website for more information on fire safety. A message from the U.S. Fire Administration. So proudly we hail. Millions of Hispanic American kids are ready to fly. Only education will set them free. And the home of the brave. Hispanic Scholarship Fund, opening American minds. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. It takes a man to be a dad. Justin Hill, designated hitter, Valdosta Baseball. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Michael Flood spent four seasons as part of the Blazer football defensive backfield. He started two of those seasons and won a national championship in 2004. Now he is a two-time member of the all-academic team. Here with the story is BSR's own and mine and Neil's brother from another mother, Tommy Parker. Athletes earned Gulf South Conference all academic honors. We caught up with one of those athletes to see how his career here at VSU made an impact on his life.
defensive back Michael Flood had accumulated a perfect grade point average in his studies. He played all four years and started two of those years, winning a conference and national title. He is currently in grad school, majoring in speech, language, pathology. Well, my athletic career at BSU has been nothing but a positive experience. I've come in and met several people and traveled a lot, and it's just been nothing but great things, and I've learned a lot here at BSU. Academically, I have nothing bad to say about it either. I mean, administratively, all the way down to the students and my classmates, um, I've learned a lot. I'm able to walk away with a good quality education here at Ballast State. Basically, my teammates, that year, we were like the overall team. And those memories that we had that year, nothing will ever be able to come close to that as far as anything like that, to that magnitude. This is a great team atmosphere that year. With Flood's outstanding academic achievements and pursued competitiveness, it is clear as to why he has been named one of the Gulf South Conference All-Academic Honoree. With him continuing his education, we commend Michael Flood and wish him the best of luck as he continues his journey. From the Blazer Sports Report, I'm Tommy Parker. Back to you in the studio. Brother from another mother? Thanks, Tommy. Now is the moment of the show where the BSR chooses to focus on one intramural sports game of the week. This time it's the ever-growing sport of racquetball. Here with a scoop on racquetball is BSR's Elaine Kent. Racquetball jumped off last week in Campus Rec. There are only three teams in the Racquetball League, so there isn't any space for error. Brett Rogers and his teammate Kurt Vermillion spoke with us about the sport and why they play. Um, racquetball is just a fun intramural sport. Um, just we're playing doubles tonight. Uh, it's a final regular season game. We got the playoffs next week. Um, we just lost our first game of three games. Hopefully, we're going to win the next one. But um, it's been fun so far. Just uh, just got to play better. Yeah, uh, we're playing these two guys over here tonight. They're pretty good. Um, first game to be is 15 to 11. We're about to go play our second game. We're having a lot of fun. Racquetball's, racquetball's a really intense sport, and uh, we enjoy playing it a lot. So. Although racquetball isn't broadcast that often, it seems to be a growing sport here on BSU's campus. I'm Elaine Kent reporting for Blazer Sports Report. Back to you guys in the studio. We will stay with intramurals as we enter into the BSR's intramural update corner. Woohoo! Yep. Be like Mike and come play basketball Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays starting at 7 p.m. in the SRC. Lamont. Can't swim? Well, guess what? You don't have to. Enter 2 Water Polo has taken a splash at Tuesdays at 8 and 9 p.m. Racquetball playoffs begin next Thursday, March the 2nd, in the Campus Recreation Center, otherwise known as the SRC. Lamont. Freedom Park, get ready. The softball deadline is March 7th, with the captain's meeting at March 9th. Who wants to be the next Michael Phelps? Come prove it, as swimming entries are due March 28th, with the captain's meeting March 9th. 30th, hit them hard. And we are still swinging as tennis entries are due February 21st. For on four flag football, the deadline is March 21st with the captain's meeting on March 23rd. And Lamont, don't flag yard. <laughs> you know what, Neil, I think I'll stay with the four on four as dodgeball deadline is March 21st with the captain's meeting on March 23rd. Go! As soccer is now kicking it Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on the North Campus soccer field. For more information, feel free to com contact Campus Recreation. Now your friend, 333-5898. Or if you live on campus, hey, 5898. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. We're finished. We have no more information to give to you on this time. Nothing this time. left to say. So, For the entire BSR cast, I'm Lamont Hammond. And I'm Neil Folger. Remember, if it's not 100% pure red and black blazer sports, I mean, no, it's not worth it. So we'll see you next week. See you later. Same time, same channel. Good night.
Good evening, Valdosta State, and welcome to your BSR. I am your host, Neil Folger. And as always, I am his co-anchor, Lamont. Check up on it, Hammond. And together we form the mouthpiece of Blazer Sports. It's Today we've got a fantastic show for it's you. It's incredible. It's yes. incredible. Yes, yes. We just work together so well. So get comfy on that couch, Valdosta. Yes. Because your Blazer Sports Report, it's off and rolling. After Monday's home finale against Montevallo, the Lady Blazer basketball team was very excited that they were going to Tupelo for the Gulf South Conference Tournament, but not too excited that they would lose focus on their battle at the beach against division foe and champion West Florida. Here the report is BSR's Shan Lloyd. VSU's girl and guy basketball season is slowly dwindling to an end, with the girls ranked third and the guys ranked fourth in the Gulf South Conference. Before they got on the road to travel to Mississippi, the BSR stopped by to discuss with the coaches what the teams were doing to physically and mentally prepare themselves for the playoffs. Number one is that we're going to try to control the offense and defensive boards. Two, you've got to make sure we do a good job in offensive and defensive transition. You know, and three, we've got to be able to get all the intangible points in terms of loose balls, you know, ball touches, all those. That's our becomes our focus. You know, if you want to get more detail offensively, we're going to try to attack them in the paint, uh, try to use our post power a little bit, play inside outside basketball, uh, and try to try to take some of their power kids defensively out of the picture uh, with a couple of defensive things we're trying to do. We also asked Coach Hill what he felt the Lady Blazers needed improvement on, as well as what they needed to do in order to prepare for conference play. Well, I think you can always improve. I think, I think you can always get better at our fundamentals. I think we get, need to get better in these game situations, uh, knowing who needs the basketball in certain times of the basketball game, when, when we make sure we make our defensive stops and no letdowns. You know, all those, in, again, intangible things I'll say over and over again. But those, that's what we must, must do to have success night in, night out. Before the girls made their travel to Mississippi for the GSC playoffs, they had one more game against West Florida to finish off their regular season. When I talked to Coach Hill, I asked him what their strategies were going into the West Florida game. You know, our, you take a look at our non-conference schedule and conference schedule, everything we do is a preparation for our postseason. We have three phases. We have a, we have a, a preseason, uh, a conference season, and a postseason, and, 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 part, and if you, and part of our journey, so to speak. You know, and for us right now, we, we, all of our classics we played in November, all of our Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Monday games have prepared us for, for conference, for conference tournament play. The Lady Blazers did not fare well in West Florida and fell 57 to 54 as the Lady Argonauts proved to be too much too late against VSU. Candace Farrell managed a double double for VSU with 14 points and 11 rebounds, while Janelle Colazzo had a very productive, productive game, netting 10 points and handing out three assists. Lindsay Monroe led the Lady Argonauts with 20 points, and sensational senior Michelle Gibson managed 13 points. With the untimely loss, the Lady Blazers finished the season at 17-9 overall and an 8-6 conference record. The loss drops VSU into the fourth seed as the Gulf South Tournament starts up Wednesday. Kalia Hills Club will face off with a fifth seed out of the West, the Southern Arkansas Lady Mule Riders on Wednesday, and tip-off is set for 3.45 Eastern Time. Also playing that opening day will be West Alabama against Arkansas Monticello. If our beloved Lady Blazers do pull out the W, the Henderson State Lady, Lady Reddies will be ready and waiting on Thursday night at 8.30 in the last quarterfinal matchup of the evening. The other three contests would put West Florida up against the West Alabama Arkansas Monticello victor, Alabama Huntsville taking on the state's woman of Delta State, and Central Arkansas locking horns with our rivals from Carrollton, the West Georgia Lady Braves. And the women's championship game will be Sunday, March 5th at 1 p.m. at the Bank Corp South Center in Tupelo, Mississippi. Reminder, that game will be televised here in Valdosta on Comcast, Charter Sports Southeast, which is basically Cox Sports. 
The guys' basketball team was also in the same boat, knowing that they had locked down a position in the tournament, but not wanting to go into Tupelo with a sour taste in their mouth. Shandra Lloyd, also, once again, has the latest on the Blazer basketball team. All around, I spoke with Coach Helfer to figure out what he and his team plan to do to be successful in their final game against West Florida, as well as their postseason. We're not really going to change from what we've been doing. We're actually going to try to pick up a little bit more defensively in the full court because they had so many turnovers against us the first time. But we're going to play pretty much the same. At this time of year, you just have to make a few adjustments or corrections from mistakes that you made and just go with what got you here. What got the Blazers to where they are now was a team who played very well offensively. But what did the team really need to focus on going into the playoffs? More consistent. I mean, I think everybody who watched this play we're a little bit up and down. You know, we'll play extremely well for a while and then extremely poor. And I think we need to make sure that we stay consistent. Even though the player's attempt is to stay consistent, Coach Helfer still feels that the team needs to be well prepared before going into the playoffs. The playoffs are interesting because everybody goes back to zero and zero. And it's whoever can develop that consistency and that confidence early in that first game. It has a, t have a chance to carry it through maybe one, two, three, four games or however many. So hopefully we'll get it, be prepared mentally to go in there with the, hey, it's a fresh start, it's a new season, it's the postseason, and try to build a little bit of confidence. Okay. And well, I think in the playoffs, the key is that you don't look towards a certain team. You look at who you're playing because in playoff action, you lose once, you're done. So our biggest threat will be the first team that we play. We won't look beyond that first team. We'll just look at the team we play try to beat them, and then after you do that, you look to the next step. It's like climbing stairs. If you don't look at the step right in front of you, you're going to trip. And in the playoffs, there's no getting up. You're out. We congratulate the Lady Blazers, as well as the Blazers, for an enjoyable regular season. From the BSR, we give our regards and hopes to an outstanding postseason in Tulupa, Mississippi. From the Blazers Sports Report, I'm Shan Lloyd. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Shan. Down in Pensacola on Saturday, the Blazers held off a West Florida bunch playing just for pride. And sometimes, that's a dangerous team to tangle with. Mike Helfer's Blazers came out and responded with an 83-80 victory as John Rogers was, well, he was John Rogers, recording another double-double with the team leading 23 points and 14 rebounds. He also had ice in his veins as he went 11 for 12 from the charity stripe. Mike Crane also got a double-double with 22 points and 10 rebounds. Marcus Grant led the Argonauts with 18 points and Donovan Redden scored 17 for West Florida. With this win, the Blazers finished, finished the regular season at 16 and 10 and their 500 conference record puts them at fourth in the GSC East. The Gulf South Conference Tournament tips off this weekend in Tupelo and as a four seed, the Blazers will play in the opening round and will have the task of facing the fifth seed out of the West, Christian Brothers University. On Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern Time, um, also playing on Wednesday will be those despised West Florida Braves, the fifth seed out of the East versus number four seeded Henderson State. With the win against CBU, the Blazers would move on to the quarterfinals and a date against number two Delta State, the winner of the GSC West and 22 in a row. Other quarterfinal games are Central Arkansas versus Alabama Huntsville. The winner of the West Georgia versus Henderson State game will play Montevallo and North Alabama to tangle with Arkansas Monticello. The men's championship game will be at the Bancorp South Center versus, in Tupelo, Mississippi, I'm sorry, Sunday, March 5th at 3.30 p.m. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at this past weekend's tennis action. And we'll see if VSU could rebound against the defending national champs of the Diamond this past Sunday. Stay tuned. Yes. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Go Blazers! Education is the key that opens a door to endless opportunities, adventures, and experiences. Without education, life is a continuing cycle of closed doors.
This message brought to you by the United States Air Force because we know the value of a good education. Guys, what do you got? You got a 28 year old black male, got three gunshot wounds in the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. We're there are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. Still. We have a 28 year old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life. He gave the best years of his life in defense of our country. He lost his leg during Desert Storm. He struggles every day to cope with this disability. Don't you think he's done enough? Why don't you do your part? Don't take a hero's space. I'm Mike Helford, head coach of the men's basketball team here at Valdosta State, and remember, you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. This past weekend, the Blazer baseball squad welcomed Florida Southern into town, and after getting pummeled 15-4 on Friday by the defending national champion, the Blazers had revenge on their minds. They beat the Moccasins 4-2 in game one of the doubleheader and looked to sweep away FSU in game two. As game two got underway, it started to cool down, but the Blazers did not. Rob Petrucci pitched a solid complete game allowing eight hits, and after jumping out to an early 3 to nothing lead, VSU let Florida Southern pull within one after a two-run fourth inning. In the seventh and final inning, the Moccasins tied it up, and it was up to the VSU offense to step it up, and step it up they did in dramatic fashion. In the bottom of the inning, Brian Hicks, who went three for four in the game, hit a single up the middle to start the inning, and four batters later, with the bases loaded, Alberto Castellan laid down a beautiful squeeze bunt to bring in Brian Hicks for the game-winning RBI as the Blazers jump for joy with a 4-3 conquest over Florida Southern. In the 4-2 Game 1 victory, Chris Davidson and Justin Lamb combined six hits and two earned runs while Kane 11 moccasins. Brian Hicks struggled going one for five but came up clutch with two ribbies. Brian Brown had both RBIs for FSU. In game two, Nick Phillips went one for three with two RBI, and Nick DiOrio went three for, th three for four with an RBI for the Moccasins. Rob Petrucci again pitched that complete game and cast it on with a game-winning suicide squeeze RBI. With a record of nine and four, the Blazers are on the road for three series this week as they played Thomas on Tuesday, the Rams of Albany State on Thursday, and will be participating in the 2006 Savannah Invitational playing Armstrong Atlantic on Saturday and then Wayne State from the Plains of Nebraska on Sunday. Not to be outdone by their male counterparts, the softball team was also in action this past weekend. Thomas Macera's team traveled to St. Leo and swept the Lady Lions in a twin bill last Saturday. In game one, Valdosta State cruised to a 6-0 shutout as our own Holly Willis was one for three and hit a bag tripper. Caroline Kripe and Amy Geis also provided the offense as Allison McKean pitched a near flawless game, giving up three hits and caying seven Lady Lions. Game two was more of a challenge as the Lady Blazers pulled out a three to one victory. Kripe again was huge as she blasted a two run homer and Trill Edwards showed up in a monster way, smacking four ribbies. Ashley Urbanick was the lone lady lion shining as she hit a home run for St. Leo. Now with a record of eight and six, one and one in the conference, the Lady Blazers will play at West Alabama in a key GSC quadruple header this Saturday and Sunday, so be there folks. Next week, they will come home to the softball complex to face off against Berry College March 6th, and Georgia College and State, March 8th. The Blazer tennis teams saw a lot of action on the courts this weekend as they hosted Armstrong Atlantic State on Friday, Tuskegee on Saturday, and conference foe and big-time tennis powerhouse West Florida on Sunday. Here were the inside 
inside info is our own Jamal Ferguson. The men and women tennis team look forward to upsetting the number one ranked Argonauts of the University of West Florida. The Blazers men got off to a great start winning two out of three double matches. In the singles, the men simply dominated by winning all the matches. I caught up with Nicholas to tell me what prepared them for this big match. Friday uh, was a big match, uh, number two in the nation. Uh, Armstrong from Savannah played him last year. We uh, were down 0-3 after doubles, so it was really big for us. Uh, we came out uh, great uh, team spirit, and we were big in doubles, and everybody was, uh, you know, out there supporting each other. And uh, then uh, in singles, it was what we expected. It was uh, tough every single one, um, you know, fighting on the court, off the court. Um, it's it was good, and uh, we we finished with a 5-4 uh, win, which was uh, really good, um, and actually gave us even more co self confidence for today's match. Uh, the women, however, did not fare as well with the Argonauts of West Florida. In doubles, Annika and Ann won eight to six, and Claire and Karina battled back in a hard fought match to also win eight to six. But the match of the afternoon was the singles match with Anna Cabrero and Mindy Steptoe. After being down four to six in the first set, she blazed back to win the second set to force a tiebreaker. Even though the women lost five of the six single matches, Annika upheld her single match against the Argonauts of West Florida. This is Jamal Ferguson reporting for the Blazer Sports Report. Thanks a bunch, Jamal. You're the man. On Friday, the tennis squads hosted Armstrong Atlantic State, and the girls found it much harder than the guys as they got swept 0-9. Karina Schulten played tough in her match, but ultimately lost 6-4, 5-7. The guys beat AASU 5-4 as Mikhail Andreo, Nicholas Overkemping, and Dominic Hansen won in singles, and the doubles duos of Christoph Snyder and Hansen, and Overkemping and Leos Jelinek defeated their pirate counterparts. On Saturday, the Tuskegee men should not have even traveled down to Valdosta because VSU gave them a spanking 9-0. Snyder and Hansen and Michael Tang and Chris Boyd had some trouble but beat their doubles opponent. The girls still could not find their way as they lost to West Florida three to six. Anika Biro defeated Mandy Septo in three sets, four six, seven six, and seven six in singles action. The doubles team of Biro and Ann Corton beat Susanna Cavalcante and Ann Beard eight six, and Claire McKinnon and Corina Scholten conquered Paola Arivalo and Septo 8-6. They now have a record of 1-3. The guys continued their hot streak as they gave West Florida their worst defeat in two years, 8-1, as Valdosta State swept the Argonauts in singles and lost only one doubles match. They kept their unblemished record at 5-0. Up next for the VSU tennis is a guys-only match on March 5th then both will take on Alabama Huntsville and Lincoln Memorial on March 10th, with the girls playing an extra match that game against Montevallo. Then on March 11th, they will host West Alabama and North Florida. The golf team did very well as they finished third out of 12 teams in the Presbyterian Golf Intercollegiate last week. Bobby Dyer placed placed sixth with a seven over 151, and Blake DeSosere and Nate Milanis tied for 15th with scores of 158. Their next tourney is out in Southern California. Man, I'm, I'm jealous. Mm -hmm. On March the 6th in the Southern Cal Intercollegiate. Coming up after the break, we'll head to the world of intramurals. And more intramurals and more intramurals, and you know what, I think they get the idea. I think so. Okay, we'll see you in a few seconds. Stay tuned. I'm Kylie Hill, the head women's basketball coach at Valdosta State University, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Plastic ones last longer. Pork bellies closed steady due to speculation that demand for bacon-related products Read me this one, Daddy. Okay, honey. The less art kids get, 
the more it shows. Are yours getting enough? Art. Ask for more. Americansforthearts.org Drivers face all kinds of distractions. Before your wireless phone becomes one of them, stop. Drive safely. Keep your phone in easy reach and dial sensibly. In bad weather or traffic, call later and use a hands-free device. Remember, with wireless, safety is your call. This is firstgov.gov. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. <laughs> Where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Make it do the dandy. Make it. What are those? Government surplus cars for auction. You posted those online last time. No, you did. I'm posting them online this time. Just log on or email us and get what you need. Firstgov.gov. I'm Nico Overcamping, VSU Men's Tennis, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Blazer football is known across the nation for their tradition of excellence on the field since coach Chris Hatcher took over the program in 2000. Now they have something much more valuable to boast about off the field. On February 21st, the annual Blazer Blood Drive, sponsored by the football team, took in a regional record of 429 blood units. Phenomenal. Members of the VSU football program recruited students all around campus throughout the week before to get enough pledges to surpass their goal of 400 units. Coach Hatcher says the, res the final result is more than gratifying. More than 1,000 lives are now saved because of the Valdosta State community. Congratulations to all involved. And now from that, it's time. It's time. It's time. For the intramural update corner, Horn, please. There we go. As there, the intramural update corner page is back. And now we see basketball playoffs tip off tonight at 7 p.m. in the SRC. Lamont. And Neil, they have managed to stay afloat over there Good at job. Campus Rec as water polo is still kicking Tuesdays at 8 and 9. Racquetball is now into its playoff season tonight at 8 in the racquetball courts at the SRC. Hit them hard, it's yours. Swing, bada bada, -bada swing. Softball entries are due March 7th and all captains meet March 9th. Get rid of those swimmies. Swimming participants are needed by March 28th and captains by March 30th. Hey, watch those hands. Four on four flag football entries are due March 21st with the captains meeting on March 23rd. Don't be a lumberjack, be an average Joe as four on four dodgeball comes your way March 21st with all Peter LaFour captain wannabes meeting March 23rd. Stay away from those yellow and red cards as soccer is kicking it Mondays through Wednesdays at six. For more information, call Campus Recreation at 333 Five six six one. Sorry, that number is three 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 five eight nine eight. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> the 2006 Corporate Cup is on its way, and all VSU faculty and staff members are invited to participate. Hosted by the Lowndes County Partnership for Health, the 12-member team will compete in events like volleyball, tug of war, basketball, horseshoe toss and Dizzy Lizzy. It will be held on Saturday, March 25th between local companies and organizations. Anybody interested can contact Samantha Matthews at 333-2163. Well, folks, I'm not sure. Well, actually, I think that's it for our show today. I'll have no more pieces of paper. We're that's out. It. It's been a blast. From the BSR crew, I'm Lamont Hammond. And I'm Neil Folger. And remember, I mean, we really don't care about anything else than Valdosta State Blazers sports. That's it. So we'll see you next week. Goodbye.
We're back. This is your Blazer Sports Report. Oh, I'm Matt Wim. <laughs> hey! Oh, hello there! How's it going? Welcome back to your Blazer Sports Report. I'm Big Red Fulton, and this is... And I'm the darker fair of this matching pair, Lamont the Headliner Hammond. That's right. We have That's a fantastic right. show for well, you today. Fantastic? No, no. Spectacular. Spectac I spectacular. like that word. Spectacular yeah. show lined up for you today. Spectacular show. So take that last, last bite of dinner mm. and throw away the leftovers because your Blazer Sports Report, it's on the air right it's now. It's on the air. Right now. It's March, ladies and gentlemen, and that can only mean one thing for sports fans, college basketball. Our Blazer basketball teams made the nine-hour trek to Tupelo, Mississippi last week to play in the 2006 Gulf South Conference basketball tournaments. The men came out a little weak but caught fire as they ousted Christian Brothers University 79-67 to in the opening round last Wednesday. Good job, guys. John Rogers was his usual self, getting his 16th double-double of the season, scoring a game-high 24 points, pulling down 11 rebounds, and rejecting four Buccaneers shots. John Banks had a standout game as well, posting a double-double with 17 points and 11 rebounds. Herman Burge also contributed with 15 points in the win. CBU was led by Nick Koss, and Kevin Waybright, who scored 21 points and 20 points respectively. That win for VSU put us in the quarterfinals where we match up with the GSC West champ and number one team in the land, the Statesmen of Delta State. After 39 minutes of grueling basketball, VSU could not find the basket as DSU star Jasper Johnson nailed a three-pointer with less than 30 seconds to go. And that gave Delta State a come from behind 74 to 70 win. JR led the Blazers with 17 points, seven rebounds, and was a giant in the path with six block shots. All five VSU starters put up double figures on that day. Jasper Johnson led the Statesmen with 27 points. Delta State went on to win the Gulf South Conference Championship over Montevallo 71 to 67 on Sunday. Valdosta's own John Rogers was named the All-Star, the All-Conference team with his exceptional play for shoaling the paint. Rogers averaged over 20 points and nine rebounds in the two tourney games. The first season under new head coach Mike Helfer was a success as Valdosta State finished 7-7 in conference and 17-11 overall. With Herman Burge, John Banks, and Mike Crane returning next season, the Blazers definitely have a core group to build and improve upon. The Lady Blazers also had an impressive opening round win over the Lady Mule Riders from Southern Arkansas in their opening round game. The Blazer offense went on a scoring run to end the first half and our defense was punishing, allowing only 37% shooting by SAU on the way to a 58 to 45 victory. Tracy Newton led the Lady Blazers with 18 points, pulled down six rebounds, handed out three assists, and stole four passes away from SAU. Carly Peterson also contributed with 10 points, two assists, and three steals for the Lady Blazers. Latrice Booker led Southern Arkansas with 16 points. In the quarterfinals, VSU was matched up with the eventual conference runner-up Henderson State. The Lady Reddies proved to be too much and too fast as they built a 15-point lead in the first half and held off numerous Lady Blazer runs as they posted a 59-50 victory. Newton again was an all-around performer as she netted 16 points, grabbed eight rebounds, dished out four assists, and got in the way of three Lady Mule Rider passes. Nicole Jernigan scored 10 points but had five turnovers in the losing effort. All five HSU starters scored in double figures, including Chandra Bush, who had 12 points. The Lady Blazers' season comes to an abrupt end with a record of 18 and 10 and two games above 500 in the conference. Coach Kylie Hill loses five phenomenal seniors, but has a great recruiting class coming in to pick up right where they left off. Attention all Blazer football fans, attention. Football's back. 
Our football Blazers officially kicked off their spring practice drills this past weekend, and our own Shan Lloyd was there to get the inside scoop. Tell us what you found, Shan. Basketball season has ended, and with spring right around the corner, fans are eagerly searching for the exciting sport that is played in and out of the rain and keeps everyone on their feet screaming for more. The Blazer football team is back in full force this year with a variety of new players from different schools. The BSR stopped through this past Saturday just to see how well the guys were meshing together. I feel pretty good. We got some good newcomers, good JUCO transfers, and then you know, we signed a bunch of guys out of high school, and I feel like a lot of them are going to be able to come in and contribute to the team and stuff like that. And, you know, if everybody buy into the system this year, you know what I'm saying? we ought to have a good season like 2004. I'm excited about the upcoming season. I think we've got a great group of guys coming in uh, with all the transfers. Everybody's gelling together, and I think we'll we'll do pretty well. We'll have another great season. This is my this is my third season here, so I understand the offense and everything that goes on, and I try to help the new players adjust because this offense is different from a lot of other places. So um, you have to learn everything on the fly. So you have to learn fast and play fast. With VSU's football team hitting the fields hard and newcomers strutting their stuff, Blazer fans should be looking out for an awesome upcoming season. From the BSR, I'm Shan Lloyd. Back to you in the studio. Coming up after this break, we'll take a look at the action on the green courts. And remember to bring your swimmies because it's going to get wet. What do I mean by that? Stay tuned. This is John Rogers. And this is Ray Kennedy. We both play for the men's VSU basketball team, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. I could reach the star, pour one down for you, so you could see the truth, and I can change the world. I would be the sunlight in your universe, and if I I want my money back. This parrot doesn't talk. <laughs> yes, he does. Plato, how can this man get a passport? 1-800-FIT-INFO! The bird's a brain. How can this man find out about Social Security benefits? 1-800-FIT-INFO! Plato here knows the number for the Federal Consumer Information Center, where you'll find all you need to know about government benefits and services. Really? Well, a 1-800-FIT-INFO, yeah. I'll keep him. He talked me into it. Ah, he talked me into it. I was a liberal arts major in college. I didn't speak a second language. What could I? What could I offer the Peace Corps? The answer surprised me. I served in South Africa teaching HIV AIDS awareness. Working with my students in Nicaragua was a great experience. We taught each other a lot about our countries and cultures. This is the Peace Corps today. Redefine your world. Join the Peace Corps. Apply now at peacecorps.gov. The men's tennis team faced off with the nationally ranked Bearcats of Landry University on Sunday, looking to continue their winning ways. And you know what? That's just what they did. Woohoo! VSU won the match 7 2 and improved to 6 0 on the season. Mikhail Andreo, Nicholas Overkimping, Dominic Hasek, and Leos Yelenik all won their seals matches without much trouble, while our Blazer doubles duos won in a straight set. Up next for VSU Tennis will be conference matches at home against Alabama Huntsville and Link Memorial on the 10th. The women's tennis team will play an extra game on the 10th against conference foe Montevallo. Then on the 11th, Valdosta State will take on West Alabama in the morning and North Alabama in the afternoon at the tennis complex. The Valdosta State golf team has been busy out on the practice greens. They have already participated in two tournaments last month and are now eager to show off their skills in Southern California. We managed to corner Coach Purvis and ask him some questions about his team's upcoming matches. 
Here's what he had to say. Hey, we leave for San Diego. Um, it's always a treat going out there. You know, it's San Diego is one of the greatest places in the world. You know, the weather's perfect. The courses are great. We always have a good time. Uh, it's it's always a strong field out there. Uh, a lot of the top West Coast teams will be there, so it gives us a chance to really see how we stand up to those teams. After San Diego, we'll have two weeks off before our next event, uh, which will be uh, the last uh, week of March. Okay, where is that located? Uh, that tournament is at uh, Georgia College, or Georgia College is the host. It's actually at Lake Oconee, uh, up just southeast of Atlanta. Um, it's always a huge event as well. And then we have our tournament uh, April 2nd through the 4th, which, you know, in my opinion, next, my opinion is next to the uh, national championship, it's probably the biggest tournament. Uh, we bring in 20 teams this year, and it's always the top teams. Last year we had 13 out of the top 25 teams were here, and this year the way the rankings are setting up, it looks like it'll be the same, maybe even more inside the top 25 will be here. As Coach Purvis mentioned, the golf team is currently out in Sunnyside, beautiful beaches, clear skies, California. Um, playing in the 56th Southern Cal Intercollegiate, and I'm not bitter at all. They look to improve on their third place finish in the Presbyterian College Intercollegiate held last month. The softball team was in action this past weekend as they took on conference foe West Alabama at West Alabama. VSU dominated the weekend and pulled off the quadruple sweep over the Lady Tigers. In game one on Saturday, the Lady Blazers won 5-0. Peaches Ramsey, Holly Willis, and Brianna Collis each had a ribby, and Allison McKean had another good pitching performance, going seven strong innings, allowing only four hits and striking out five. BSU caught fire in game two of the first doubleheader, winning 14-0. Wow. Kristen Lindsay was perfect, and I mean perfect. She threw a complete game no-hitter against UWA. Holly Willis cracked two home runs in that game and drove home four RBI. Lindsay Lloyd blasted her first Blazer homer, congratulations, and also drove in four ribbies. The teams were more even on the second day, but VSU still prevailed in game one of the second doubleheader, four to two. Lindsay Lloyd went perfect, two for two at the plate and scored one run for the Lady Blazers as West Alabama's Corey Curley had both Lady Tiger RBIs. The Lady Blazers completed the remarkable four-game sweep in game two, six to three. Amy Geis went two for four with three RBI, not to mention her sixth home run of the year. She's on a great pace. Holly Willis was perfect from the plate, going three for three with two RBI and two runs scored. Coming up next for the Lady Blazers is a home doubleheader versus Georgia College and State on Wednesday afternoon before hosting conference foe Alabama Huntsville in a conference quadruple header this weekend at the softball complex. Coach Macera's team then hits the road to Pensacola for two games against the Lady Argonauts of West Florida on March 15th. Obviously something has worked out at Billy Grant Field because our Blazer baseball team is now nationally ranked. Hall of Fame coach Thomas led his team on a road trip this past weekend to Savannah, where they played in the 2006 Savannah Invitational. It turns out the Blazers should have stayed in Valdosta. VSU lost to Armstrong Atlantic State on Saturday, 8-2. Chris Harris belted a solo home run and Justin Hill knocked in a Blazer as well, but it was not enough to cover, to take over the play of Josh Dallas and Sean Hotzik. The two Pirates combined for five ribbies on the day. In game two, VSU took to the field against the Wildcats from Wayne State College in Nebraska. It was the same end result as the Blazers fell seven to five. Scott Brooker went two for five with two RBIs and a fellow Blazer Judd Seymour, Brian Hicks, and Cole Paul each had a RBI. Chris Pedroza, Scott Brodowski, and Arnaldo Ovalles were the big bats for Wayne State. As mentioned before, Valdosta State is now ranked 19th in America. The top four teams in the nation have played some games since the last standings update. 
The Blazers now sit at 11 and 6 overall with still number with still no conference games under our belt, unfortunately. Next up for VSU baseball is a doubleheader at home this week playing Bruton Parker tomorrow and Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. They then hit the road again for a game against the Hurricanes of Georgia Southwestern next Tuesday, the 14th, and at Edward Waters College, the 15th. They will wrap up their road trip playing at Lincoln Memorial, March 18th and the 19th. Coming up after this latest break, we'll take a look at not one, but two intramural sports. And somewhere in the middle, we'll sandwich in your old favorite, the Update Corner. The Update Corner. I'm Coach Tommy Thomas, and you're watching the Blazer Sports Report. You have coverage if that tree in your front yard ends up in your living room. Seat belts protect you in the event of an accident. You go through life being protected in dozens of ways. And if you're an investor, your personal safety net includes the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. It is there to return your securities in the unlikely event that your brokerage firm fails. That almost never happens. But don't you feel better knowing that the SIPC is there for you if you need it? It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. Be part of a growing movement, Tree City USA. We care for our town's trees. And we plan for their future. Support Tree City USA where you live. Go to arborday.org to learn which trees to plant where. You can find out how to contact your state forester for community forestry assistance. Help the Arbor Day Foundation plant more trees across the nation. Plant a tree today for all the world to share. Go to arborday.org. This is Jared Purvis, head golf coach here at VSU. You're watching the Blazer Sports Report. Intramurals are in full force right now as three sports are in the playoffs and one is just getting started. BSR, um, BSR's own Tiffany Simmons got an opportunity to check out the buzz about soccer up at North Campus. It's football season here at VSU, not the kind of football that has made VSU known nationwide. It's the football the Americans don't seem to care about. Yes, soccer. But the BSR found some Blazers that were interested. Even BSR's producer Chris Walsh was a part of the game. The Pi Kappa Phi and Sigma Nu fraternities got together to play a friendly intramural soccer game. Sadly, it wasn't a friendly game to all. Soccer is a demanding sport physically. We spoke with Dwayne Price, who's been playing since he was five, about what he and his teammates do to prepare for the grueling match. Usually before the game, we, uh, the night before, we won't go out. We'll try to drink a lot of water. And before the games, we try to eat a lot of carbs. And uh, throughout the week, we go to the gym a lot and do a lot of sprints, try to get in shape. The Pi Kappa Phi fraternity had a different strategy. Oh, well, personally, I take it, uh, is a, just a game, come out here and mess around uh, with some buddies of mine. Other people, though, take it serious. But uh, as for me, I like to play around. Unfortunately for the Sigma News, they lost their game today, but hopefully they'll be able to get together and come up with a different game strategy in order to win their game next week. For the Blazers Sports Report, I'm Tiffany Simmons. And now it's that time again. It's time to bring out the growing in popularity. Intramural update corner, hot dog. Get out the Gatorade and headbands because the champions of basketball will be decided this week. As you see, the finals are this week, starting at 8 p.m. in the SRC Lamont. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what you've all been waiting for, a water, two play, water polo two playoff game between Karen Allen and the CSC Saints tomorrow night at 8. Let's see if she can handle the CSC Saints all by herself. What's up with that? I don't know. Racquetball Finals is this Thursday at 8 p.m. in the Campus Recreation Center, Lamont. 
find your aluminum bats because all softball entries are due tomorrow and the captains meet Thursday. Swimming participants are needed by March 28th and captains by March 30th. And remember, you have to wait 30 minutes to go swimming after you've had something to eat. Vermont! The Super Bowl is months over, but football never takes a break. Four and four flag book football entries are due March 21st, with the captains meeting March 23rd. You're not dodging wrenches, you're dodging balls. Four on four dodgeball entries are due the same date, March 21st, with the captains meeting on March 23rd. The lot. Hey Neil, did you remember your shin guards? No. Soccer is off and still kicking Mondays through Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. at North Campus. Tuesday at 4 is a great game with the Brown Crew versus, oh no, not them. Then on Wednesday at 5, come out and see Lightning Running with Forgiven. As always, if you have more questions, contact Campus Recreation at 333-5898. What? You thought we were done? Ha ha! Shame on you, because we're not. Because we've got an interesting story about intertube water polo. We sent Tiffany Simmons out to the, to the pool at the SRC to check it out. Football and basketball are the most popular intramural sports that get the most attention. The BSR decided to take a different route and go into the deep blue. We went to find out why water polo isn't as popular as it could be. Um, it's not as successful as I'd like it to be because it's actually pretty easy. It's not like real water polo. We give you a flotation device and stuff. And we usually get four to six teams, which is pretty good because a lot of people are, you know, kind of afraid of water or whatever. So um, we tried it with inner tubes too. I think it's really fun. I don't know why it's not more successful so to better grasp the concept of the game we spoke with a participant of water polo it's five on five you have four players and a goalie and uh, you have a ball and you have to throw it to your teammates and when uh, you're standing still you have to have the ball above your head and uh, the way to score is you gotta shoot the ball into the net and uh, there's a line in front of the goal that you can't go in front of and you just have to shoot behind that line and uh, some of the rules are you can't knock the player. The, ball, the player has a ball. You can't hit their arm. You can't dunk them. Um, and like I said, you have to keep the ball above water. When you swim with it, you, can, you have to keep it above water while you swim. Um, that's, that's pretty much the basic rules. For those who notice that this may be different from professional water polo, we found out the differences between Valdosta's intramural water polo and professional. The rules are a little different here. Um, you have to wear a belt, a flotation belt. And I've never played with a flotation belt, so it kind of hinders the way you move. And, uh, and also, in regular water polo, you have like more players play at a time, and here it's just five. Chris and his team won their game due to forfeit. But as a team captain, he says hopefully they will be able to showcase their skills in upcoming games and win as well. For Blazer Sports Report, I'm Tiffany Simmons. Do you know what? I'm not afraid of water. I'm not either. So I think that, that, that's, a, that's good for us. Well, folks, um, there's really nothing left on the script, so I'm guessing it's time to clock out. It's been a blast. That's our show for this week. I'm Lamont Hammond, and we'd like to give a special thanks to our crew behind the scenes for all their hard work Very nice and dedication. job. Very nice job. And now we're just going to go ahead and leave you by saying, you know, like laser sports or, you know. That's it. Don't even turn on TV. See you next week. Bye. No. The week after that, spring break's next week. We won't be here.
this fun? It's fun. Things are great here. And we play games that help us learn. I like everything about dancing. I just like dancing and stuff. I like making jewelry. I thought it was a lot of fun because it's a lot of hands-on. Most of all, I really like measuring things. They teach us a lot. I liked all my classes. Last time was start tie-dyeing our shirts. I like everything that I do in scope. In cooking class, we made banana pudding, dirt cake, cookies, and a jelly magic milkshake. Scope is really fun. You should join. It's really fun. I always like to learn a different language. It's been a fun day. That's a 10 <laughs> I hope I'll come back next year.